the uh, first time I went to jail, it was very traumatic for me. I was living on the reservation. I had just started a comic book store. Um, one of the things we would do at the comic book store was to take in, um, use DVDs, and we'd give people like uh, five bucks for them and we'd turn around and sell them for ten. Um, mostly we tried to focus on like sci-fi and superhero stuff, but for the most part we were slowly becoming a uh, uh, like a pawn shop. Every now and then, like uh, when I wasn't working, we would come into the shop and just take videos, um, just take them home and watch them. It was like having our own um, rental store. Uh, so one day uh, we pull up and I walk in and there's kids all over the place. Um, we had a pretty successful shop for a time. And uh, I see this one kid and he's kneeling behind the main door. It looks like he's hiding from somebody so I go up to him and I ask him um, what's wrong? Like are you okay? And, and he goes like this and he says um, no I'm just praying. <laughs> and so I didn't think of anything of it. I thought it was weird but I didn't think anything of it really. Um, I go in I get my movie and um, make sure everything's okay in the shop and then I leave. So the next day I show up and uh, we used to sell these um, figures, little action figures uh, called Mage Knights and part of the series were these giant castle pieces and it was really hard to sell those on the reservation even though we sold tons of those little guys. Um, but I noticed that one of the castles was gone and it was like the gatehouse, it was the main one. And so I was like, oh wow, somebody uh, somebody finally bought this. So I go in the register and I realize that there's no money in the register. There's no additional money in the register. Uh, and I ask um, the guy who was working that night. And he tells me that he doesn't remember selling it. And so it's kind of obvious that the thing had been stolen. And we have no idea who took it. Um, so later on that day, all the kids show up and they're all playing um, Mage Knights because we had a big uh, war board for them. And uh, one of the kids has this um, figure, and the figure is only available in the uh, box set, in the in the thing that was stolen, basically. Um, so we question him, and he um, rats out his friends who gave him the piece. Apparently, it he had caught them stealing and in exchange for him keeping quiet they gave him the figure out of it. So it turns out what the kid had done is while the cashier was distracted he knocked the box off the counter on the ground and then slowly walked by kicking it um, until he got around to the outside door and when he got around to the outside door is when I pulled up in my car and the only thing he could think to do was to just sit on the box. And um, that was the kid I saw who was praying. Uh, apparently he was praying that I wouldn't notice that he was sitting on this um, toy that he stole. And, uh, and I didn't because I'm an idiot. So um, what we ended up doing is we ended up rounding up the three kids who had stolen from us. Because uh, it was a big conspiracy. And uh, we went to each kid's house, one at a time. Uh, the first time, you know, they were really apologetic and they, uh, they blamed the other kid. Uh, so we go to the other kid's parents and we t let them know what's going on. Um, the way it works on the reservation is they actually have a jail set aside for little kids. It's um, called White Buffalo Home. And it's a pretty terrible place and we wouldn't want to send any kids there, you know. Um, it's kind of like Juvie Hall. So, uh, what we end up doing is we go, so we go to the first parent's house, then we go to the second, and the second parent's, like, uh, totally outraged, and she can't believe her kid would do, do it, and they all blame the third kid. Um, uh, and she actually comes with me to the third kid's parent's house. Um, so we roll up and we go inside and the third kid's 
admitting to it, he's apologizing, and he comes up with these uh, stacks of comic books, and he says, I stole all these also, and he hands me the stack of comic books, and I'm like, like Jesus, how did you steal so much from us? Like, um, And it was probably because we played way too many video games instead of paying attention to the store. Um, but anyways, so... Um, as he's handing me the stack of comics and I'm, I'm lecturing him on the evils of stealing, uh, one of his grandparents comes in, uh, this older gentleman who's still very much in shape and much larger than me. He comes up and he's like, what's going on here? Um, cause he hears us, hears me telling him about how wrong it is to steal. And I was like, oh, nothing. We're, we've got it taken care of. Uh, you know, this kid stole from us, and we're just making it right. And so the guy says, um, do you have a warrant? You can't be in here if you don't have a warrant. And I'm like, no, I'm not a cop. I'm not trying to call the cops. I'm just uh, trying to get my property back, and then I'm going to leave. And so the guy threatens to shoot me if I don't get off his property. Um, he tells me I don't have any evidence, and I have no right to be there. And I say, well, you're... Uh, grandkid just handed me all these comics and he's admitted that he's stolen uh, that he stole them and so the old guy grabs the comics and he's like shaking me trying to get the comics out of my hand um, and he like shoves me over the couch and um, so I fall over the couch and then the, the old lady starts screaming at me to stop and I'm not doing anything I'm just standing there uh, dumbfounded and the old lady's yelling at me to stop and I look at the old lady and I'm like, I'm not doing anything. And she says, you need to stop. He has a heart condition. And it was um, so bizarre that they were blaming me for everything that I just laughed at the ridiculousness of the situation. And I'm like, um, you know, ha ha ha. I can't even deal with this right now. Um, so the old guy, again, he says, um, that I need to get out of his house or he's going to shoot me. And I'm like, I'm leaving. Um, and I noticed that he actually has a gun right there next to him. So I just, I head out um, the door and I get in the car of the uh, second parent who had driven us there. And, um, and I have her bring me back to the comic book store. I go inside and I'm really mad. Because, um, I don't know, it's pretty stupid. And uh, so I decide to go to the cops. So I go to the police station, and uh, there's nobody there except for the receptionist. And she tells me that the one the one cop on duty is responding to a call. And so I leave a note for him to say that, um, you know, I wanted to make a police report that this kid had stolen from me and that his grandfather had threatened my life. And so I go back to the comic book store and I wait for the cop and it takes him about 20 minutes. He shows up and I'm like, oh, good. And he's like, are you Richard? And um, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I've been waiting for you. Uh, let's go talk in my office. Um, so he follows me into my office and I say, um, I say, well, it's about time. Like, I wanted to tell you the whole story, blah, blah, blah. And he says... He says, I need to stop you right there. Before you say anything else, I need to let you know you're under arrest. And, uh, and I'm like, what? I called you. <laughs> and apparently the reason he wasn't there to take my report the first time is because the grandparents had called the cops and they told me, they told the cops that I had beaten up the old man and that, um, uh, when they told me he had a heart condition that I just laughed at him and uh, all this other made up stuff and so I'm like uh, okay whatever I'll go to the police station we'll get it sorted out and um, then we'll file a false police report or something um, so I'm like are you gonna handcuff me and he's like do I have to like why don't you just get into the car and I'll drive you down to the police station um, so I hop into the back of the uh, police car, it's like a big SUV, I'm not in handcuffs or anything, 
and we drive down to the back of the police station and they take me in for processing. So I go in there and I'm the whole time I'm just talking about how ridiculous it is, how like um, they're all lying and I basically tell them my side of the story and nobody's writing anything down and I don't think anybody's even actually listening to me. Um, so I go in, they search my pockets and like take everything out of them. Uh, then they lead me into this like closet and the, the lady cop hands me a striped jumpsuit like from old timey days, a striped jumpsuit and a pair of slippers. And uh, like uh, at that moment is when it actually struck me like, like this is real, I'm, I'm being arrested. And I'm not like a, a criminal type, I don't do anything bad, I'm pretty boring actually. Um, so they hand me the striped jumpsuit and I say, uh, well, I still get to file my report, right? And they look at me and they say, um, no. <laughs> no, you can't. Um, you know, put your jumpsuit on. And, uh, like, as soon as they say that, as soon as they say no, uh, I just start bawling because I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> like, is the world gone insane? I... I don't understand what's going on. Uh, so I'm bawling, I'm putting on my striped jumpsuit and my slippers, and they take all my clothes from me. Uh, and then they lead me into um, general population, which is like two rooms and a shower, and like 30 homeless people. And uh, like the second I hit general population, I'm no longer crying, and I'm all like puffing up and and they're all like, what are you in for? And I'm like, oh, I'm in for assault. <laughs> um, you know, I was trying to be hard or whatever. And, uh, and I call my grandma. And I'm, and, uh, I'm like, Grandma, this is Richard. I'm in jail. And she goes, uh, she goes, what? Ronnie? Because that's my brother. And, uh, and I'm like, uh, no, this is Richard, and she's she can't believe that it's me and that I would be in jail. So she keeps asking, like, you mean Ronnie? And I'm like, no, this is Richard. I'm I'm in jail. I need somebody to come and get me. Um, so I was in jail for probably like I don't know, 20 minutes or half an hour or something like that. Um, it went by pretty quick. Uh, and I get out, and the next. Um, like, that was on a Friday, and if I didn't get out by 5 o'clock, I would have been stuck in there until Monday morning. Um, so I make it out just in time. And then uh, Monday morning, I go to my hearing uh, in front of the judge, and I, I'm supposed to be there at, I think, 10.30. I show up at, like, 9.30, just because I don't want to screw anything up. And I wait there until, like, 3 o'clock, until everybody's gone. And he's just basically pardoning people left and right. He's like, anybody who's in for being homeless, uh, stand up. You're all pardoned. Just go and I'll see you tomorrow when you get arrested again. <laughs> and uh, so he goes through everybody. And then finally, he's like, if that's all the case is, uh, court's adjourned. And I stand up and I'm like, wait, um, you haven't heard my case yet. And he was like, who are you? We don't have any record of you or, um, we don't have any record of you on our books. So he says, like, who are you? And I'm, I'm like, uh, my name's Richard, blah, blah, blah. And he says, uh, we don't have any record of you on your books. Um, are you sure you're supposed to be here? And I was like, yeah, I was in jail. Uh, turns out the, the cop who arrested me didn't file any, um, proper police paperwork. Uh, the whole thing was kind of a disaster, and eventually all of the cops got fired in the town um, and replaced by BIA agents. Um, it was pretty bad. But, um, yeah, that's that's my first arrest, and it's not on my permanent record just because um, the cop never filed a report, but I have a f weird feeling like if I hadn't uh, 
bonded out when I did, I'd probably still be in there because, you know, they would just I'd just be that unknown prisoner wandering around, living in the jail, uh, waiting for my court date. <laughs> um, nothing ever came of the, uh, the kid. I never filed a police report against him or his grandparents. I just decided to let the whole thing go and, um, and just, uh, move on with my life because it just wasn't worth it for me. Um, but yeah, that, that was the first time I was in jail. Notice I said the first time. Right. Excellent.